okay so uh, the topic for the first topic for today uh, is the so-called react router or router depends on uh, which part of the world uh, you like the accent more um, and uh, uh, it's a mechanism that will help us uh, to create uh, applications that contain more than one page hmm? uh, at least visual page um, and this will also help you solve many of the of the problems that we, you had also during the labs. So in fact, the last lab will be uh, would ask you to re refactor a bit your application by exploiting uh, the capabilities uh, of the router. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a, a general mechanism for uh, allowing us uh, to um, to generate uh, different layouts. Uh, uh, while the user is navigating. So we know that React is a single page application. So basically there's only one HTTP request at the beginning. It will create the page. Uh, it will mount the application inside the div in the, in the index page. And everything goes inside that page. So no, uh, there is no, no there, we try to avoid at all costs to reload in the index.html page again. Hmm. Uh, but this would be a limitation because we have to mount an entire application into a single container, into a single layout, and so on. Uh, from the user point of view, uh, you are, uh, we are used to click on different items and go to different parts of the application that look like different pages because they have different items, different elements in that. So what we want to do is to uh, allow, uh, give the user the possibility of uh, and give the programmer also the possibility of changing the layout of the website depending on, on the section where they are. And uh, so they, the user would feel like it's moving across different pages, across different HTML pages that you create separately. But from the programmer point of view, uh, it's all one application. So what, what's the drawback? If I navigate to a different page, I'm reloading all the application, I'm reloading all the JavaScript, and worst of all, I'm resetting all the state that was stored in the application. So we want to really to avoid navigating away from our application, but we want to give the impression to the user that he's still navigating. This includes changing the layout and can be done with flags, with states, okay, uh, this is visible or not, and so we play with Boolean variables to make a part of the page visible or hidden uh, and it's it's a manual process uh, but at the same time uh, so it can be done but it's costly uh, but at the same time we also want to give the user the possibility of using the browser so the backward and forward buttons in the in the in the browser window uh, normally don't work when we are entering into a react application so if we click on something the browser bar the address bar is always fixed is always the same if you click on, on the back button, you just go away, you exit from the application, okay? Which is not what we want, basically. We want the user to be able to go forward and backwards and go to the previous page within the application, not outside the application, okay? Uh, uh, and that's, at the same time, we will try also always to keep the state uh, across the page changes. So don't reload everything because the state was uh, complex to build. We had to work for getting the right state, and don't, so the, we don't want to lose it. Hmm? So what, how, uh, this are, is just a, an example. You remember that React comes from from the guys at, uh, at, at Facebook. Uh, these are, for example, four different layouts from Facebook um, of the same application. So depending on whether you go to your posts or profile or uh, pages or whatever, uh, you get different pages. So different elements are some some elements in the page are common, like the right hand bar, and some are um, or the or the top bar, and some are totally different, like the the, the middle content. So we may have one column or two columns uh, with some content or different one and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is the mechanism that moves you, uh, lets you move through different parts of the application. You feel like there are different sections, let's say, but from the application point of view, it's just one application. We are not reloading the page anyway. Hmm? But we see the address bar that is changing. Okay. Uh, so in a way, we are mimicking what we would do with an application done of of different statical HTML pages, server-side generated HTML pages, 
um, by letting the user move, letting the address change, um, at, but at, at the same time we are not uh, uh, doing that, we are just mimicking that. Uh, and uh, okay, the, the examples are, are uh, infinite, so every time you have an application that will just one, more than one page, for example, even our very stupid application like the to-do list or the or the uh, scores book, uh, we would when we click on add or update, uh, we would probably change the content of the page uh, instead of putting the form just uh, besides uh, the list, which is very 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 bad, very ugly to see, and so on. Okay, so different. Uh, different moments in the application would call for a different layout for a different content. Um, and uh, one idea is to, uh, in some way, exploit the basic uh, mechanism that already browsers have uh, built in uh, for navigation, which are the URLs, the addresses. Okay. Um, the, 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 the old paradigm was that every time you change address, the browser will make a new HTTP request. Okay, we, for, we forget for this, we try to avoid that, but uh, we want to keep uh, the, um, the link between the URL address and the kind of page where we are. So we are exploiting the URL in the browser to tell the application which part of, of the application should be displayed. Okay, so uh, we uh, have a mechanism for preventing the browser from navigating away. So we are still within the same application, but we change the URL in the same application um, and we let the components, the React components, query that URL and say, okay, according to what is in the URL, this component needs to be rendered or not, this component needs to be changed or rendered in a different way and so on. Okay, so for example, we have the home page. I, I took some, some URLs from, uh, from Facebook, for example, corresponding to the four images we saw before. Uh, the home page, the profile page, uh, the post of a person, and uh, the name of a page. So it's not a user; it's a it's a page, or uh, the list of our of the pages created by a user. So these are different URLs that that will you will see if you navigate uh, on Facebook, for example, and each of them will generate a different version of the application. Hmm? Um, and uh, you see that some URLs also embed some information. So, for example, the, the uh, a username or, or an ID that will customize the content of a page. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the user will see that every page is every link is clicking every every place he's going, uh, he will see uh, a different URL. And uh, and so the sort of a navigation state. So navigation state is not the application state, it's something more. Uh, in addition to the state that we have inside the components, uh, the whole application in general uh, is navigating into different sections. So we have an extra information and this extra information is stored in the address of the web page. So we are exploiting this new uh, capability that the browsers already have uh, natively, but we are trying, we try to exploit it uh, uh, in a in a in a better way. Um, for these mechanisms to work, uh, we need uh, a, a strange trick, basically, to play on, on the server. Um, basically, we want these different URLs to be handled by the client. So inside our React application, we will parse the different addresses and we will do different things. And what happens if I navigate to this page? This, this request got, goes to the web server, and typically the web server would try to serve me a page, a file that is called inside the folder pages. Well, the web server for React needs to be configured in a different way so that whatever the, the URL is, the server will always return the index page, index.js or index.html, which is the first page of the React application. So basically, uh, if you try in your React application to change the URL by hand, you will see that you will always land in the very same identical application, always in the same place, because the React server actually is playing this trick. Uh, this trick. Every URL you request, it will always give you the same file and the same application. 
and this trick is useful because then in a, in a second step the application can query the URL and uh, and decide what to do okay this would require a, a bit of configuration if you uh, if you want to if we want to do, do that with a, with a normal web server but we'll come to that uh, later on um, Ivan is also asking uh, it's useful for the browser history yes I forgot to mention uh, the fact that we are navigating into the different uh, uh, URLs uh, so when we click the URL of the page changes uh, we can put that URL into the history and so the user can navigate also backwards in time through the history so this mechanism will also uh, make uh, or let's say recover the functionality of the browser history and uh, um, and, uh, and and let the browser remember different uh, pages okay so that's something that uh, is uh, sorry uh, it's a, a good for the user and it's basically free for us how to do that okay uh, we would need to manage uh, the urls we will need to manage the history we will need to manage the state of the application we will need to prevent a web page from being loaded when we link when we click on a link okay so there's a lot of work to do uh, but luckily for us uh, there are libraries for doing that okay and uh, we are uh, mentioning and using the the most popular routing library in the react uh, um, let's say ecosystem which is called you guess it react router okay so this is a, um, uh, one of the many uh, libraries uh, that will manage for you all these details that we mentioned so handling the urls uh, parsing the urls giving uh, fragments to the application uh, managing the history and so on okay uh, and uh, most importantly uh, decide which components uh, should be included or not included uh, depending on according to the url that we are seeing the library that we were using uh, as i mentioned is called uh, react uh, router and uh, uh, here are some links uh, to that uh, website we, we may open it because we we'll of course we'll need it later and uh, uh, you see that uh, this reactrouter.com website uh, has two versions one for the web and one for native applications uh, for react native of course we are interested in the in the web version okay so this is the, docu the documentation that we also uh, have a look at uh, while uh, while explaining uh, the library okay so this is the the, the documentation is some specification in the left column here and some examples in the right one so it's a bit strange to read but uh, it's quite complete actually um okay so to install that we need to install a, a package called react router dom hmm? uh, react router is the core library that works both for the dom the web version and the um, um, and the um, and the native version and uh, you see that there are different uh, packages for extending that in the dom so in the web or uh, in uh, in the, the native world also if you if you install react router dom it will as a dependency also install react router so you have both of them okay okay um, so how does it work uh, one uh, uh, slogan basically of the react router people is that uh, the router is uh, just react okay it's just uh, builds uh, on the basic react uh, behavior so it will provide you with some components and uh, with some hooks uh, that you can use normally inside your application so there will be component called uh, router called uh, router switch and so on uh, switch uh, link and so on and by using this component we are exploiting the capability of the router all the rest is done uh, say automatically by by the library itself so handing the, the history and the urls and so on is something that is uh, invisible to the programmer we don't need to do anything special if uh, if we use uh, these components uh, for creating our application and some of the components will be for moving through different pages uh, and some other component will be for deciding what to show in uh, in what part of the application um, so the idea the basic idea is that uh, we have uh, um, 
a part of the application when we where we decide where to go so imagine the navigation bar or the main menu or something like that uh, where we uh, embed some uh, link components okay so a link component is like like a link basically it may be uh, like an a or like a button okay we would use a, a link or a button for navigating to a different page okay we should forget about those uh, in a way and use the link uh, um, um, component and this link component uh, specifies a url where the application should navigate so when the user clicks on the home or on about the url will be changed that's it basically the link will change the url on the browser and will update the history accordingly but when the url has changed like uh, now it changed into about then there, were, there are other components that are called route that will selectively be activated or hidden according to the matching with the path. So we have a, com a route component uh, that is only matched when the path is exactly slash. And so this component will not be matched by the about URL. So this, this one will not be shown. Then we have a route component with, uh, uh, that will be triggered, activated, when the path is uh, slash about. And in this case, yes, this is our path. So React will render the content of this component. In this case, it will render this about component. And the third one will, will not be considered because we are inside the switch statement. So the first one that is true. Uh, just stops uh, the, the the path matching uh, in, in the components. Okay, so we have to split our mind. Uh, in one page, we have, we want to decide uh, um, or to program the link uh, for navigating uh, to different parts of the application. So we are we are using some uh, um, linking components, and on the other half side, we are querying the for changing the URL. And on the other side, we are querying the URL with the routing components that will basically be very simple. They will decide the, uh, whether to show or not, uh, given the content of, of each block. So like imagine you had a, lo a lot of uh, so Boolean state variables and they say, OK, this should be shown, yes or not. And the second part should be shown, yes or not. And you're you are managing these variables to decide which part of the application to, to display. OK, all of these variables are gone. Are they are just? Uh, you know, summarized into the URL. So by analyzing the URL, you decide what to show. Okay. Uh, the price for that is, uh, uh, as I mentioned here, and as Lorenzo uh, is mentioning, all the application need to be included into a big router component. We'll see the details right, right now. Uh, all the application, I mean, just the main app the main, the top level component. You just need to put a router across the top level component, and then you can use all these links and routes into other components. So you don't need to wrap everything, every component into router, only the top level one. Unless you want to work with nested routers, but that's a different story. Hmm? Um, uh, Dario, I remain in component reduplicated from a path to another one. Uh, basically everything which is outside the router will be rendered automatically. So if you don't put a route component, everything works normally. If you put a route component, that will be rendered selectively, only if the match is good. OK, so but let's go to the details of the different components. OK, um, basically, the, the React Router library uh, contains different algorithms or different techniques for, for routing. OK, the, the normal one the normal one is uh, uh, the so-called browser router that uses basically the URL uh, syntax um, and the history. There's another version, the hash router, uh, that uses basically uh, URLs with the hash symbol. So in, instead of having a slash about, you have a, a slash, so the home page, hash symbol about. So basically, the difference is that uh, uh, here the browser will see a different page 
and here the browser will always see the same page the home page and different sort of anchors inside the page you you, you may remember that the hash sign in urls just refers to a portion of the page itself uh, this was good for older browsers that had some difficulties in uh, in preventing the page for reloading uh, and so it was included uh, but uh, usually we tend to use the browser router but th these two are the um, the most used one we tend to use the browser one because it's more visible basically uh, we also have some uh, sort of memory router for example which uh, keeps everything in memory and so it doesn't change the url uh, all these kind, kind of routers change the way in which the navigation state is stored basically so one in the first one is stored inside the address the second one is stored inside the hash and the third one is stored into the local state of the browser and so on in in our type of application the browser router is good and it's the recommended choice uh, by by the creators of the library and uh, it, ju it just uh, uh, you just import from the react router dom library the browser router and usually uh, we tend to rename it just a router so that just to make it simpler if you want to change the type of router you just have to change the import statement okay uh, the price that you have to pay for the browser router, uh, apart from uh, using modern browsers, is also configuring the server uh, so that uh, all the different URLs always map uh, to index.html. Uh, uh, that is uh, uh, the, the, our application. Okay, but uh, uh, it's some server configuration that for a moment is automatically done for us in the React server. And we'll see later on when we, leave, when we discuss the servers uh, uh, how to configure that. It's just easy. Hmm? Uh, it's just a, a small detail. And uh, if you don't have control on the server, then you can you may use the Edge server that doesn't need this kind of configuration. Okay. So the the idea is just this router tag. You import it by selecting which kind of router, and then you must put it around the entire application. Um, Okay, so uh, as I said the server configuration is as easy as a couple of instructions, but uh, we'll see when uh, uh, next week we start uh, uh, discussing uh, the server side of the applications. Um, and inside our application, so right now our application is uh, wrapped inside the router, we can use uh, finally the route component that is able, as we mentioned, to selectively rendering part of the component part of the application so the the route component is basically is uh, two um, inputs one is uh, what is the condition for rendering so what is the matching rule and the second is the content to render in that case so when and what when is the path argument basically that will try to match the current url with the pattern that we are providing and basically this path uh, is uh, a regular expression is expressed as a regular expression that will try to match uh, the, the beginning basically of, of the address mm -hmm. just remember uh, it's a regular expression and it starts from the beginning so uh, if you have uh, um, a, f and a path uh, a slash about uh, will also match uh, a url that is about uh, 33 for example mm -hmm. because uh, the regular expression slash about will also match something which is longer um, if we don't want that, there are attributes for changing that, like exact, for example. And then we have the specification of what to render, okay? And what to render is can be specified in three different ways, and as we will see in a in a moment. Uh, in the in the previous examples, we just uh, uh, had the component uh, inside the route, so as a child, so it may render or not the children. Or uh, another way is uh, uh, specifying a component property with the specification of a function component uh, that we want to render or not. So instead of uh, nesting it as a child, uh, we can just specify that as, a, as an attribute. It's the same thing, basically. Hmm? Um, for route matching, uh, we say that the default is uh, a, is, a is interpreting the path expression as a regular, uh, the path string as a regular expression. 
uh, and so just remember that if there is no path uh, everything matches or also if there is a slash uh, it will match every page in the application so because every page will start with slash uh, if you if we want uh, we can restrict this kind of matching to the um, exact we are for example with the exact attribute uh, that will do just a string comparison and no regular expression so and we if we are writing an exact attribute uh, then the path will be compared by string comparison if we don't write an exact we we will have a regular expression and uh, okay and then the other attributes are just for for specifying the the mechanism for matching um, also the these routes these paths may contain parametric segments uh, remember the examples that we show in Facebook, there was a post slash and ID of the post. So we want a route uh, which is able to match every URL of that form, which is post slash something, some number or some string or some identifier. So we want to have placeholders uh, in our URLs that will be matched uh, uh, every time. Of course, we can, you, you could build that with sorry with the uh, um with the regular expressions right uh, you could uh, have a dot uh, asterisk uh, expression and so on but it will become of course complex uh, there's a shortcut where you can specify uh, a fragment with the column symbol here and say okay uh, i'm matching every url with this format slash post slash something and this something will be stored into an ID uh, variable. Uh, there will be uh, some uh, object match that contains parameters of the match that will contain an ID property. So this ID will come from there. So what, basically, what we are what we are doing is we are um, matching with one single rule a whole set of URLs that contain a parameter inside and we have a mechanism uh, inside, uh, say inside the, the render component uh, to be able to extract this parameter and in this case of course the component to be rendered should be given access to this value no? and this can be done with a you guess it with a callback so the third way of uh, nesting a component inside the router. The first one was just nesting the JSX. The second was component equal to the component name. The third method is uh, render. With the render attribute, we are specifying a callback that will uh, return the, the component to be rendered. But the interesting part is that this callback as a parameter, a so-called match object, and this match object contains some information about uh, the the url that has been matched by but especially it contains a parameters sub objects that has some properties uh, that are let's say automatically filled uh, from the actual content that was in the url okay so in this case uh, if the user will uh, write some la something uh, or if the url will be something like post one to three of course uh, in this case, uh, uh, this expression match.params.id would be actually the string one to three, hmm? um, because everything in the URLs uh, is uh, parsed as strings. But you, for for accessing that, you need to access the match object that should be the argument of the um, of the render function. Um, there's a strange syntax here. Match. Uh, you see that we have. Uh, a, bra a couple of braces here okay because actually what the render function is giving us is a more complex object that has more attributes uh, that and one of these attributes is match so we are actually destructuring this object and only extracting the match uh, object in the documentation we see the full uh, version of the object hmm? so basically these are the three um, three uh, ways of using the route uh, component for specifying what to render. Uh, one is uh, with a component attribute and a component name. The second is a, a render attribute with a callback function. And uh, um, 
yes uh, and uh, usually here you you may uh, you may extract uh, the match object there's also another um, way which is called uh, uh, children we use it use it the children attribute uh, which uh, is a bit strange because it always renders the results so actually it's a route that will always be rendered but uh, the details of the match uh, are available to the component inside so the component themselves uh, in some way will customize themselves so in, in normally in a route uh, you just render a component or not you render it or you just omit it but what if you have to render it anyway but with a slight difference so this is where the children way of, of creating a route uh, may be useful you render them anyway but inside you are uh, maybe reading some parameter of the route and do some some detailed difference uh, so it's not a real uh, selection. It's not really selective. The, 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 the children attribute will render in any cases. And uh, <clears throat> with the render and with the children uh, mechanism, uh, you get an object that receives uh, uh, the match information, and the location information, and the history information. So these are uh, the objects that are available to the children of a route that can, in a way, be queried and can customize the render itself of the component. And we see the location will be uh, very useful. So uh, the match object <clears throat> contains information about uh, uh, how the pattern matching went, basically. So if you have a render or a children callback, uh, this match object is one of the parameters that you are given. Uh, in the component syntax, so the first of the three syntaxes here, uh, the match is all automatically injected as a property inside your object. So in your object, you can access props.match, and, and uh, if your object is being rendered by a route, then the match uh, property will be there and will contain these, uh, these uh, um, attributes, basically. Um, it's ba it's basically um, if we want to fine tune something. In many cases, we don't need to go in such a much such a strict detail, uh, except for extracting the parameters. Yes, that can be useful. In the other cases, uh, uh, well, we let the route do their work. Uh, let me render or not the component. I don't want to second guess the route and say, okay, but why did you match this? Is, was it an exact was it an exact match or not or something like that? Okay, maybe we don't need it in many cases, but we may need uh, the values of some parameters in the case of parametric queries. Okay, um, of course, uh, inside uh, the React router, there, were, there are also some hooks uh, that we can use uh, also to access the same information. So we saw that the match information and also the location that we'll see in a moment uh, are available as parameters to the callback function. But uh, probably it's also easier to extract them with the, uh, uh, with the hooks uh, for example, if you want to get the parameters, you can just use the use params uh, inside the component. So you don't need to do anything extra or setting a callback in the when you are calling the component. Just the component inside can call the uh, use parameters, uh, use param, and uh, can extract uh, um, all these uh, uh, the values that are passed as parameters just inside the component itself. And the same for the location or for the history object. Okay, so inside the component, you can just uh, extract them when you want. Um, Ivan is asking whether the component version is used for static components that are not dependent on the parameters. Uh, uh, no, actually, no, uh, because the, the URL parameters are available also in the component version here, with the, uh, because the match object is passed automatically as a property, or you can access them in any case uh, with, a, with a hook. So the information is always there. Hmm? Uh, it's uh, passed in a transparent way, let's say. Uh, we don't have to write the callback, uh, but the information is, uh, is already there hmm? in the, as, a, as a prop or as a hook. Hmm? So actually, it's just your choice of syntax. They are, the three uh, types are basically equivalent. Okay, uh, routes are just independent from each other. 
every route will match the URL and will decide, okay, should they render or not my children, independently from each other. Uh, in the case you want, uh, you have a group of routes and you want just to render one of them, you have uh, A, to be very careful with the matching so that when one matches, the others will not, or B, include them into a switch component. Including them in the switch component means that the first, the routes are evaluated in order, and the first one that matches will be rendered, and the others will be just skipped. Okay. Um, so like a case statement uh, in uh, in C basically. Okay. So the first one will win, and uh, it's important uh, since the, we are going in in order. Okay, that uh, uh, the stricter routes are at the top and the wider uh, routes are at, at the end of the of the switch hmm? so that uh, uh, for example we may have one catch all route at the end so in any case render this there's no path so there's no selection there's no filtering but this one will be matched only if all the previous one ones uh, were not matched okay so inside uh, a group of routes uh, we, we will render all those who match. But if these routes are inside the switch, we will only render the first one that matches. So it depends on us, basically, what we want to do. We want to have different parts of the pages that will activate selectively according to some condition. OK, they, are, they will be independent routes, and each route will decide whether to render or not. Or if you want actually to have different sort of pages in our application, then it's better to have a switch that will uh, basically uh, only select one of the components and each uh, each version will be a different component okay uh, and this is the basically is the normal way uh, of, of using routes uh, inside the switch it's more useful normally but they, they work both way just remember if you want to then to be exclusive use a switch um, okay these were the uh, components for rendering, hmm? basically the route and, uh, um, and switch. And for moving, for changing the URL, OK, we have the other half of the library that gives us mechanisms for uh, moving across different pages. Uh, one is the link component, the most important one, which is the one that lets the user click on a link and change the URL in the router way, so not by doing a, a real link. So in your application, don't use the real links. Always use the link component. The link component will internally render a link, but this link will, uh, uh, let's say the action of this link will be redefined so that uh, uh, will not load to a different page, but will internally change the router status. So every time, just uh, uh, remember every time you, move, you need to move to a different page uh, always use a link uh, and forget about uh, the um, manually creating uh, the anchors the a uh, tags uh, because having an a will reload the application and you are losing all the advantages uh, of the router okay um, the link component uh, generates a link on your page and this link will uh, uh, navigate to a different page specified by the two attributes and two may be simply a string so like here two string a page or uh, an object and for us the the object version will be uh, very important uh, Okay, the object contains four. This object that we are we are going we need to pass to the two attributes contains uh, four should contain uh, four attributes. The first one is the path name, which is exact, exactly the string. Okay, so we may pass it directly a string or an object like two equal to an object. So we have double braces. Remember, the first one is for uh, entering JavaScript and the second one is for creating the object. So we may have path name equal to slash about. 
and then other properties okay like for example uh, state that we'll see in a moment which is a, sorry it's, this is a uh, is a colon okay it's not an equal because we are creating an object state colon and will be some object with some properties and so we close one and two and three braces okay uh, so these are uh, equivalent syntaxes with the difference that with the object syntax which is a bit more complex because we have to count all the braces uh, you can pass a so-called state object uh, custom defined you can insert into the link any kind of object you want and this object is generated by the page that contains the link and will be transferred to the route that renders the destination page so this is a very powerful mechanism for passing some parameters when the user clicks on a link some some extra values we will see them in, in a couple in the next couple of slides okay uh, so this is why uh, if you are just linking to the home page okay just a, a link uh, with a string is good but if you're linking to maybe a page where is a, where you have a detailed form or detailed information of, of course that page should know about what is the object we want to show or for which we want to show the details <coughs> and, and this can be can be passed with this uh, uh, object syntax so we create an object that contains a state uh, attribute that contains an object with information that we want Okay, it's a bit of a nesting, but uh, okay, that's the, that's the game we have to play. Uh, when the user clicks on the link, the history is updated automatically, so we don't need to do anything, except if you want to override the last, uh, uh, so to override the last location instead of pushing that into the history, and in this case, we have the you can just use the replace uh, attribute, but we are not uh, um, so. Um, uh, these details about history management are, are just for corner cases. So, uh, when we are using the object as a link destination with the two attributes, uh, we said that we may have this, uh, for, we may specify for this object these four attributes. Path name, of course, is the most important one because it's specifying where we want to go. Um, and uh, and uh, basically if we have some query string parameters uh, and we want to separate them from a path name we can use search but these are rarely used okay that's why i'm not mentioning them and the state is the important one because it's something some state that will persist in the new location so the new location will know this state uh, it's unfortunately it's unfortunate that this attribute is called state because actually it has nothing to do with the state of the component it is not the state of the first component it is not the state of the destination component it's just a property of the location that can store some objects inside and it's an internal mechanism of the browser it's the browser itself that is managing this state object but the good part is that in when we are preparing a link we can store some state inside the link and when we are in the destination we can extract this information and usually this information can be used for example to initialize the, the component state after the route so this is some state inside the browser which is the state of the link if you want to call it uh, it is not automatically the state of the component it's just a sort of an extra parameter an extra input to the component that uh, may be set by us hmm? and um, how to exploit that we have just uh, called fragment like okay we already saw that uh, when we want to link we need to include uh, an object that contains a state property that contains an object with some properties for example the exam code <clears throat> and in the in the rendering route so where we are rendering the component we can just use location the location object um, 
the location object as a state property and the state property will contain uh, a copy actually of the value that was given here of the same properties okay so it's similar to the match object where the match has some something that is taken from the url and is given to the component inside as a property of an object param dot match dot name of the property here uh, is something that comes from the previous page is not in the url it's uh, say invisible in the url it's inside the browser and we can extract with location dot state dot name of the property um, of course location can be accessed uh, and i think the easiest way with the hook is location that will uh, directly give you access to that uh, to that object to the location object and so you can query whether the location object has a state property defined then this state will be populated with these properties otherwise maybe the link didn't have a state object and so location.state uh, is not populated so okay. you may go to a to the exam form component by different links probably and some links will have an object a state object with them some links will not have a state object with them so we all you always need to check whether the state has been defined in the previous page that that led uh, to you, you know, that, that brought you to this uh, component um you, i said the, the most you know the easiest way is to extract the location with a hook the use location hook otherwise you can use the callback va variant where okay location uh, is one of the properties that you are given like match and so on hmm? i prefer the hooks because they make the calling the component much simpler um, but uh, of course the two ways are equivalent um this is a variant of a link component so we have only two more to go and then we go to the, to the example uh, a navigation link a nav link is uh, exactly it behaves exactly like the link component it has the same attributes the same behavior and so on there's only one difference is that navigation link will set a class name uh, on the component that is currently matching the URL. So just imagine you have a menu with many items and uh, uh, the menu corresponding to the currently selected URL is highlighted in some different colors. Okay, this may, is made uh, automatic uh, by the NavLink component. So the NavLink component internally tries to match its own rule, its own uh, destination, and uh, if it it realizes that the current page we are on is the same page as its uh, its own to destination we will add the active class to the css of the component and so you may use your css for uh, giving a different uh, layout a different appearance a different color a different highlighting to the component that uh, uh, contain the high, the active attribute so in a way it's a um, you don't need to manage it automatically by remembering which one is the currently selected one because every link will know by itself if it is the selected one or not okay so let's imagine in the lab your set of filters if you map the filters to a route to different routes then every link will con will know whether it is the selected filter and in that case it will be highlighted or you can put it in bold face or whatever just by setting the css for the active class of those parts of the components okay so it's just a, an extra feature for the link everything else that we are we discussed about the link component is still valid here hmm. um, okay then you can customize it you can use a different class name or whatever but basically the mechanism is the same hmm. we have an extra css for the component that knows that is the matching uh, link Okay, the last one is the uh, redirect component. Uh, a link is useful because the user can click on a link and navigate to a different page. But the operation of navigating to a different page, in this case, is uh, um, triggered by the user. It's the user that needs to click on a link. 
but imagine you are inside a component and you decide that your application should go to the home page or should go to a, a specific page not directly because the user clicks somewhere but uh, because some state condition is become, uh, become true or whatever so you need to have a mechanism for navigating programmatically so from inside your code <coughs> you need to navigate somewhere so it's like uh, sort of an invisible link that is automatically clicked okay so i okay I, now i want to go to that page like the user clicked on a link to go there but the user is not there i don't want to render the link i don't want to ask the user to click i just want to go there okay so this is made by the uh, redirect component and the redirect component is, is a, it has a strange behavior is really um, is confusing simple but confusing uh, the rule is that whenever the redirect component is rendered in the component itself then the url is changed so redirect will never show anything on the screen when you have a redirect that react is showing and converting trying to convert to the dom it will just stop the rendering and go to the different page and change the url and restart rendering the new page okay so redirect is not a real visible component in the page it's a sort of a trigger, then whenever the rendering tree encounters a redirect element and tries to render it, then the, this page is thrown away, the URL is changed to the new location, and the rendering will start again. So, um, a way for going to a specific page is to force your component to render a redirect element. Um, imagine you have you are submitting a form okay so you have your form you have all the data here that the user has inserted insert here these and there and then you have the submit button at the end right um, you click on the submit button and you are Usually, what we are doing, we, are, we execute a callback that will do some validation or check of the data and so on. And maybe we'll call some uh, add, some, some method, add data or whatever, okay? After that, we want to close this form. So after we submit it, we, we want to make it invisible. We want to go back to the home page or wherever we want to go, okay? Um, but we we should we would like to go away uh, as an instruction inside the callback for the submit button okay so we want the submit button to f to make the same page go away uh, there is nothing where, where we can do it uh, this uh, uh, say in this way uh, we would like to have a, a say, oh, sort of an instruction um, an imperative instruction say go somewhere else uh, it can be done by manipulating the history so we can make a history.push with a new url but it's a sort of a low level uh, mechanism uh, the the normal mechanism here is say okay we we cannot from the callback change the page but or close this component but what we can do is to change the state and so that uh, the new state will force a rendering of the redirect component. So in this case, may, for example, we have a, a Boolean variable, a Boolean state, I called it submitted here, that in the handle of the submission button, we set this variable to true. And in the render function, in the return of the function, if the state is true, so normally it was false, if the state is true, then I will be rendering a redirect component. Otherwise, I'm rendering the normal form. Okay, return all the form uh, that we no, we uh, normally have. Okay, uh, if I am rendering, in this case, I'm rendering exclusively this component. I could also render something bigger that contains that component, and it, it works in the same way. 
every at the moment in which this is uh, um, executed then uh, the component uh, the, the url is changed and the um, the new page will be displayed or actually the different routes uh, will uh, will trigger so instead of using the location.push, which is a sort of a imperative way of, of manipulating the history, we use the, uh, the functional way of just uh, changing the state so that this, spe this special component is rendered. OK. Um, we have a question by Mathieu that uh, who is asking whether the page re-renders if we redirect to the current URL. Um, Uh, depends on what you mean by re-rendering. Basically, all the components, of course, are are uh, re-evaluated uh, because uh, we are changing some state. We are changing some states, and so everything that is affected by the state uh, will be re-rendered. Of course, uh, if the new location is the same as the previous location, and if your components are really functional components. Uh, then the new page will be identical to the to the previous one. So actually, the diff of the DOM will be basically nearly empty. Okay. So redirecting to the same page where you are shouldn't have very shouldn't have a visible effect. You are just showing the same as before because uh, all the props, like the location, for example, of the component didn't change. So there is no reason why the new page would have a different uh, content than before. Except you are playing trick with the state, but rather writing to yourself and changing the state is just making things more complex. So choose whether you want to play with the state or play with the routes, uh, because there are two different ways uh, in some cases uh, to, to achieve the same result, uh, and you want to decide uh, which one you, you want to go. Okay. Um, always remember, and this uh, uh, is a source of many errors. We are not in control of when the components are rendered. Rendering is an asynchronous process, is totally managed by React, that will call our functions when the library wants. Maybe not in the order that we expect, maybe they will skip some renderings for optimization because something else has changed in parallel, and so there are some race conditions, whether we do this before or that before, and so on. Okay, So that every time we are thinking, uh, OK, I want this to render, make a step back and try to think in a, in a more functional way. Okay, Change the parameters that will affect how this renders and not force the rendering of the application. Okay, Remember that the rendering and also state updates, so use set state, are asynchronous. You never know which happens first. I'm telling you because yesterday I, to, I spent more than half an hour trying to chase a bug of this, of this type, basically. OK, so that's all about uh, the router. So I, um, I think we can try to, uh, to use it uh, to, uh, say, complete our application with the, with the scores. OK, so let me yesterday or oh, yeah, yesterday I pushed a slightly different version of our application, but it was just so let me. OK. Zoom, and let's start uh, with the um, npm start with the, the same version that we had last week. Okay, you remember last week we had something uh, what we developed during the, the hour, uh, something which is quite ugly because we have the form uh, we are sorry we, the, we have the table and the, the forms uh, uh, are just uh, below the table hmm? I don't like it a lot okay uh, you don't see it normally uh, so what what I want to do now is to transform this application and define three different routes one is just the home page that will only contain uh, the um, the table all the control buttons, delete and uh, and edit, and an add button. 
and then I want to create two different routes. One is add and the other is update that will render the form where and, and in this form I can insert the data. But when I'm showing the form, of course, the, the, the table will not be visible. OK, so in our application, we are defined. We want to define three different routes. Uh, home, add and update. And navigate between the three. So what does navigate from home to add? Well, it will be the add button. What navigates back from add to the home? Well, the save button or the cancel button. In both cases, we are closing this form and going back there. The difference is that in the, with the cancel, we are just going back and doing nothing else. With the save, we need to do some processing and then go there. And the same for update. Uh, how can I navigate from home to update with the yellow button, with the edit button? Uh, so we'll open the same form and uh, we'll also go back uh, with seven cancel buttons to the home page. OK, uh, what is the difference between add and update? Well, basically, the difference is that with update, we need to pre-fill the form with the data corresponding to the row that we are trying to update. OK, in add, we are opening an empty form. With the edit, we are opening a form that already contains some information that the user might change, may change. OK, so that's the difference. Uh, we need to we may reuse the same form component, uh, but in one case, it should be initialized empty. And in the second case, it should be initialized uh, with the current exam. And this also suggests us that in this link, uh, we need to pass some information from the form, from the table to the form. And we can do that with the location state. OK, so this is the big picture. Let's go to the code. Uh, so first of all, we need to uh, install the uh, the uh, li uh, React uh, library, the router library. So let me make first a new branch. Let's call it with the router, so that we can have the code separated and also uh, then merge it into the main. And uh, in this branch, I install React Router DOM. Hmm? Which is the module that we need. And with this React Router DOM, we need to wrap the app. So we already all have all the wrapping for the containers. We could have some wrapping of the um, context providers. But on top of all of this, uh, we are also now adding a, a router element. So first, we need to import. Import. What do we want to import? Import the uh, browser router. And we call it router from. Uh, React Router DOM. Okay, so we are importing the router component and we wrap our entire application inside this router component. So let's go back to the return here. We insert a router. Don't confuse router with route. Okay, router is the general mechanism and route is a single filter. Router and everything should be inside the router. Everything that uses routes, of course. Mm. Okay. Okay, uh, we don't need to put the router text in every element, in every function, only at the top level, okay? So here is enough. And then you see that we are all the components in, inside another file somewhere else. Uh, we don't care. We are already inside the router, so we can use the switches and routes and whatever you want. OK, so basically we could uh, uh, customize the exam table. Hmm? That exam table, remember, that is generating the table and also generating the forms and so on. 
and we can decide what to render in the different cases. Uh, so exam table is here and uh, is returning a table or uh, and the form for the exams below. Right now we want to decide okay, uh, which uh, components we want to show in the different cases, in the different routes. So what we could do, first of all, could be to customize the, the, um, the rendering of the exam table. For example, with a big switch. Okay, a switch uh, from a React router. So switch should be included from React router DOM no, or React router. Yeah. And uh, so we wrote everything into a switch. And inside the switch, we may have three different routes. Route. Uh, one is the path, uh, the, the home page, slash. Exact and contains the, only the table. Then we have a route with the path would be uh, equal to add is the form for adding, and we include it here. And then we need to have a new route for the update. Route should be imported, of course. OK. So we are just including the different parts of the page that need to be rendered at different times into different routes component with special paths. So let's try if it works. Mm, it doesn't. Why doesn't it do? Because it should not render this form here. Because the form is in route add. So, oh, I didn't save it, sorry. I forgot to save the file. Okay, now it's working. Much better. So, we are, we are in, the, in the home page, and uh, therefore only the form will match. Uh, we can see with the inspector also, with the React inspector, the components. Uh, it became a bit uh, complicated because the router itself is creating a lot of context providers and consumers. Okay, but uh, uh, we see that we have the router that wraps the entire application, that contains our history uh, object. We don't want to mess with that object. Uh, and in our exam table, we have the switch that contains the three children. And inside the switch, we have the three different routes. One, only one is shown here because the other ones are not uh, selected, basically. So you see that the other routes that were not rendered just don't appear here, don't exist. The component doesn't exist. OK? Um, and if we had to change, the, for example, if I put manually slash add, I will, rendering, I will be rendering this form. OK, so you see that everything depends on the URL. There's no special magic, basically. And if I did this add, then uh, inside the switch, we add the, uh, the only router will be the one that contains the exam form. And I don't see the component that will generate the table. OK, of course, we are not supposed to uh, to enter uh, the URLs by hand, but should be done by links. Hmm. Uh, to answer Alessio's question, um, we are putting exact 
because uh, uh, otherwise everything that starts with the slash will be matched. So everything will be matched basically. Okay, because otherwise it will be uh, in, without the exact uh, the matching algorithm will be to try to match the beginning of the URL, and if the beginning matches, then the route is selected. So everything will match a slash. Uh, unless we are uh, we are forcing the exact and so or it's just only a slash mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, if, if we don't put the exact uh, then um, the, the match will be just a prefix of the actual URL so either you put that as the last element to be matched last or if there will the risk that you are matching everything with a sort of wildcard match mm -hmm. um, I get the following props dot history is undefined by including router. Uh, Lorenzo is saying, uh, are you sure that is right router DOM and not React router? Because uh, okay, so I don't know what uh, what can be the the reason. Uh, maybe we, we, we may have a look at the code uh, later on together, right? Okay. Um, okay. So let's, uh, the first step, uh, I was about the router. Okay. Good. So uh, the first thing we have to do is to put an add button here so that we can navigate from the form to the, uh, to the, um, Sorry, from the table to the form. Okay, so we add an add button here that will be a link for us. Okay, so inside at the end of the table, uh, at the end of the table, in the uh, in the exam table component, we may add uh, after the table uh, a link that goes to the add route. Right, and what does the link contain? Maybe just an add message. We might need to import the link and see how it looks. So I just added this line, one link here, and now I have an add component, an add link in the, the bottom of the page. If I click on it, I'm moving to this page. But you may check and double check that the clicking on this link will not reload the page. So if you look at the network, I click on add, the URL will change, but there are no extra network calls. So we are not asking from the add URL to the server. We are just navigating internally. So how can we go back? OK, the cancel can be a link back to the home page. So if you go to the cancel button, so inside the form, we have a cancel a cancel button here, and the cancel button could just be wrapped inside a link to the home page. In this case, we have uh, uh, just for say aesthetical reasons, we are we are wrapping the the button inside the link, but it works uh, equally well. So inside the link, you can have just the text and it becomes a normal link, or you can include the button and it will work uh, normally. So click on cancel, go here, click on add, click on cancel, click on add. You see the URL is changing. So we are navigating through different routes of the application just by using links, normal links or button links. Maybe it's nicer to have uh, uh, everything as a button. So we could also, we saw that it works. So even here in the in the table, we may have a button. That for add, we may have a variant, uh, which is the, I think, success. Uh, it makes it green. And the add would be the text inside the button. Okay, it's just to make it green, nothing more. 
Okay, these are the easy parts, just uh, navigating through links. What did it do? Just adding a link to equal to a URL, new URL, and this URL will match some uh, some route, hopefully, at the next render of the component. You see, I didn't have to do any special operations. Okay, it's the user that clicking on the link changed the, the route and the change of the route will re-render the component and so some components will swap will have been swapped out and some others have been swapped in. Hmm. Um, so right now we are a bit of mixing the logic of the application with the with the routing because we are working on existing code. Usually you would have one component where all the navigation is included and then you are rendering different parts of the application you are not mixing the table with the navigation and so on but uh, just to incrementally understand what is going on okay and what about the submission of the form so right now we have a form for adding the exam uh, this here and we already have an, a handle submit event for the form submission when the user saves the new course here and this handle submit is uh, of course uh, checking the validity that doing some validity checks uh, creating the exam object and adding it to the our state our global state of the application everything is fine what we want to do here so what is happening now if i can add, click on add choose one course fill the form 28 uh, and giving a date and then click on save when i click on save the form is reset but i i would expect going back to the pay to the table instead i'm still here because the url didn't change uh, i actually added the course if i click on cancel by the way to go back to the home page i see that the new course is there is this 28 but it doesn't go back in, in automatically to the home page so what we want to do here in the in the submission code in the handle submit here i want to go back to the home page how can we do that with the trick of a, a, an extra state variable. A, a flag that will tell, OK, we are done here. This form has been submitted. We don't need to do anything else. And so we can go back to the home page. So uh, how can we do that? Uh, we can force the navigation back to the home page with a redirect uh, operation. So we, are just, we just need an extra state. I call it submitted like we have in the slide. Set submitted. Is state. And we initialize this to false. So initially the form is not submitted, so we have to keep here. But when the form is actually submitted, so we know that everything is done and we added the, the new exam to the our list we can just set submitted to true okay in this case we i don't need this tree anymore let's comment that and then i will delete that so the logic is here is that when i'm sure that the form is no longer needed because the data has been submitted i set a flag for that and how do I use this flag in the rendering application? So normally I must render the form, but if the submitted is true, I should just go away. Okay. So what I could add is something like a submitted and uh, redirect to slash. Uh, and of course I need to wrap this into a fragment because right now we have two components to be rendering the redirect and the form uh, 
uh, redirect should be imported. Okay, so when submit becomes true, we are rendering this component. By the way, we are also rendering everything else. We could uh, put this in an else statement if you want, but we don't care. Right now, in, in this code, we are uh, uh, rendering the redirect component in addition to the existing form. We could also modify the code so that it will render the, uh, in alternative to the form. It doesn't matter. What matters is whether the redirect is rendered or not. Okay. Uh, Francesco is adding, why can't you just add a link to go back to the main page? Because the link will display something where the user has to click. So the user will click on save for the form, for saving, and then an extra button for going back to the home page. What I want to do is that when I click on save, automatically I go to the home page. The link goes to the home page, but doesn't execute my code for inserting the data. Doesn't call my callback. So I need the button to call the callback, and then the callback to force going back to the home page. And it can be a link because at that point, I don't want to involve the user anymore. I don't want the user to click again on something that they put on the page. And so uh, the component will change, will render differently, and this redirect would uh, uh, go back to change the URL. And of course, since the URL has changed, the rendering, the next rendering will not render the, the form anymore, but would render the, the, the table. Uh, Andrea, no, yeah, we cannot write the, the redirect here. This is what I would like to do because we are thinking in a imperative way. At this point, they want to go there, okay? Uh, uh, it's not possible because redirect is a component that only works in the rendering phase. So in the return of the function. So we should set some state, then we'll trigger a new render that will render the component and this will change. So it's a long, uh, it's a three-step procedure, I, I know. <laughs> But this is the functional way of doing that. Um, here, I would ju just have the component, but the component will not be rendered, basically. So uh, it will be just sit there, like creating an object, but this object will not do anything. Hmm? So if you write redirect here, it will not work, because it will create a render object, but it will not render. Sorry, it will create the redirect object, but it, it will not render it, and so it will have no effect. So let's see if it's working. Go back to our table, add, choose cloud computing, 23, one date. I'm clicking on save. Okay, we see that now we are back on the page and we did, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, change of state and immediately followed by the, the redirect and the redirect will re-render the table with the updated state. Now, now we have cloud computing, we have the add button. So we can go back either by clicking on cancel or by actually adding something. Of course, if there's some errors in the form, it will, I'm not redirecting, I'm staying here. Okay, so the mechanism for escaping the form is a bit uh, complex. Uh, there's one detail that I want to, to mention is that you see this submitted that becomes true here. And when it's true, it will force going away from this component. You don't see, you don't need, you don't have any instruction for re resetting submitted to false. Okay? Uh, why? Because the next time you open this component, it will be a new one. We saw in the, in the inspector here that the components that are not in the route are, are not rendered at all. So when I'm rendering a form and I'm clicking on add and I have an exam form, I click on cancel, this exam form disappears, is destroyed, the object is destroyed, I click again on add, I will have again an exam form, but that is a different one. And being a different one, it means that its state 
is initialized again with the default value. So uh, just be aware that when you navigate away, the component that you have and its internal state is destroyed. And if you navigate again to that component, the state is rebuilt from scratch. And this is probably what you want. Okay. Uh, in this case, you want a new form to start with that doesn't remember anything about the past form. And so it doesn't remember being submitted. The submitted was a different form. It's not the current one. Okay. So it's just a fine point, because if you had to do something inside this form, it would be dangerous if you are redirecting to a route that will still contain this component. So in that case, the component would not be destroyed and rebuilt, but it will be reused and the state will not change, will not be reset to, to, to false. So it's a source of, of, of bugs okay, that we may have uh, um, sometimes. Okay. It was the bug that I was fighting yesterday. Remember whether it's the same component, uh, so it will keep the state, or if it's a, if it's, if it's a new component that was destroyed and rebuilt, uh, and that will be different. Okay, there's one last step for us, which is uh, uh, making the edit buttons work, the, the yellow buttons work. Okay. So right now we have the delete working when we click on the on the blue on the red uh, trash bin but uh, of course it doesn't uh, need uh, it doesn't require any routing it doesn't require a special route for deleting we have the add working and the edit uh, still needs to be uh, to be implemented how do we implement the edit uh, basically we want to navigate to the update router which for the moment is is empty we don't know what to render here what is that the update route what could we render there we could render an exam form identical to the previous one with two differences first difference the form should be pre-filled with the current value of the exam second difference the submission button would not add but modify the list of the exams so we'll try to make this exam form more versatile so that it can work in two different ways by uh, having an initial state, which is not empty, but is uh, specified by a parameter and uh, uh, making so that the callback may choose between adding or updating the, uh, the content. Hmm? Um, I think that uh, we can do this. We can, we can complete the exercise after the break. If you agree, uh, so that uh, I can commit and push uh, this version here. And uh, uh, just after the break, we will complete the exercise uh, by adding the edit functionality, which, which is basically the, the more complex one. And it would not be easy to do without uh, the routing, especially for the initialization of the form with the, with the actual uh, value of, of the exam. Okay, so if you don't have any questions about this, I'm proposing you to do as the 15 minutes break and uh, go to basically 10.25 or something like that. Um, or a couple of minutes before, yeah, 10.25 for the uh, edit of a course. Yes, in the as soon as I break, I will push the code immediately so that you can have a look. <laughs> 